Hey y'all, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel. So today I have decided to make another creation using the loop yarn. And I'm gonna be honest with you, it was the color that drew me to this yarn. It is so pretty and so vibrant. So I decided that I would make something with it and I decided I would make a nice little slouchy hat. So again, the loop yarn is just yarn that you don't need any special tools to create anything with it. You just use the loops that are pre-made for you and you can make all kinds of different little projects with it. I really like it and you can get it here where I'm at locally at any of my little box type stores, Joanne's Fabrics, things like that, but you can also catch it online. I use these little fur balls at the top of the hat and I'll show you how I connected those at the end of the video, but let's just go ahead and get started because this is a really quick project and I really want you to make it, okay? Okay, first things first, once you get the yarn kind of unraveled from the skein, you need to start to determine how many loops you need to make for this project. Since we're making a 20 inch circumference hat, which is basically for like a small child, you will then count over, we're going to have a tail, which is going to have five loops, and we're going to count over 28 additional loops, okay? So in this case, I'm leaving my tail over there, and I'll show you what we do with that tail towards the end of the project once we get to that. I'm counting over five loops and I'm going to go ahead and put a stitch marker there. That way I know I'm not going to use those loops in the creation of my hat, okay? Then I'm going to count over 28 loops and I'm going to start putting those loops facing in one direction. So in this case, I like them all to face up because that's going to be my bottom row and then I'm going to have a top row that's going to feed into those loops, okay? So Again, I'm going to count across to about 28 loops and then I'm going to go ahead and put another stitch marker and that very last loop that we count. That way that I know that I don't need to go any further when I'm creating the hat, okay? And I know that's where I'm going to start. Once I have that, that done and I have all my little loops, I'm going to try, mind you, it's going to bend a little bit, but you try to put the loops in the, one, the same direction. You're going to take the two loops that are right next to each other and those are going to feed into each other. Going forward after these two loops, we're gonna feed from the top, okay? So basically at this point, you have two loops. You're going to take the loop that's on your left, the furthest one over, the orange that's furthest over, and you're gonna feed it into the loop that's in your right hand. Okay, just like that, and give it a little tug. It's gonna be loosey-goosey just because it's the very first one, but as we work the project across, it won't feel the same way, okay? Now we're going to, again, take those loops. We're going to have a row on the top and we're going to have a row on the bottom. You're going to feed the row on the top into the row on the bottom. You see what I did there? So I'll show you a, a few times actually. So basically I took the yellow loop and I put it into the red loop. Again, I'll do it again. The yellow loop will go into the red loop in this case. So the top loops will go into the bottom loop. Okay, and then just give it a little tug because you want it to stay in place. And you'll continue doing this down the number of loops that we um, created. So we remember we made um, 28 loops. We took 28 loops out. We're going to feed 28 loops into those loops. Okay, so purple goes into the green. Give it a tug. And then the purple one there goes into the other green and so real quick tip when you're working this I found it a lot easier to work on a flat surface especially the first couple of rows after which you can probably put it in your lap and just get to working but it's good to get your foundation rows completed on a flat surface so that you don't miss a stitch Nothing really happens if you just miss a stitch. You just have to go back and fix it. So there's nothing that's so permanent that it's going to mess up your project if you miss a stitch. It just means you have to go back in and fix it, okay? So give it a little tug and continue to work across the row. And I'm going to stay on camera here just to make sure that you understand the concept because honestly, once you get these this down, you'll do that for another um, set of rows until we get to the desired height for our hat okay and I really like this because typically you work hats in a round but I found this to be an 
easier beginner friendly project if we don't work it in a round and we kind of put it all together at the end. You can work this in a round though. I just found it to be a little bit more complicated. Okay, so we've gotten one row completely complete, completely done and now we're moving on to row two. So again, now you have your bottom loops are all facing up. You're gonna take that yarn and we're gonna move that to the top row now and we're gonna feed the top row again into the bottom row. See how that looks? And you're gonna continue doing this across the row. So just make sure you get your ends complete and then we will keep going. We'll just continue doing exactly what you did in the previous row and this row and actually we'll continue that same pattern until we get to the desired number of rows created. All right, and just keep on working and I'll stay on camera with you just for a little bit longer just to ensure that you have this down. Okay, we're nearing the end here. It shapes up really quickly. I, I promise you, once you get your stride, you'll have this hat done in absolutely no time. So here you are, I'm just kind of pulling everything flush to make sure it looks really neat. And at this point, you'll just keep working and then we'll meet back when you get done. Okay, so we're actually gonna do a total of 13 rows. I don't know if I mentioned that already. If you want the hat to be more slouchy, you'll do more rows, but this skein of yarn will only go to a certain number. So if you're only gonna use one skein of yarn, you'll go to 13 rows and you'll have a small little tail left. And that's how you're gonna get your little slouchy look to this hat. Okay, so this is what it looks like, really nice. I love the opposite side. I mean, it just looks very mosaic. You have the raised, the raised ridges there. I'm not making the hat from this side though. Um, this is how we're gonna finish off the work, but you have options. If you really like the way the back side looks better, then use the back side. I just went with the front side because it was a very uniform look. Okay, so now let's finish this off. The, the finish this off, we're now going to feed the loops into their its neighbor. So you're gonna go side to side instead of top to bottom. And as you can see here on the screen, I'm literally just going from the right to the left. I'm feeding the yarn from the right into the loop from the left, continuing to hold the yarn that was on the right. So as you can see here, I put the green, this is bad colors. <laughs> I put the um, blue yarn into the green and I continue holding the blue and I'll put the blue into the blue. I'll put the purple into the blue and I'll just continue doing this all the way down until we completely bind off the top. Okay, so just continue working. And I'll meet you back when we get close to the end. So here you are at the end now, you've gotten one left. You're gonna feed that one through like we've been doing. And then you have that tail. So with that tail there, we're going to feed that through the loop. And I haven't cut the tail or made it easy or anything, just the loops and everything, just put it right through the loop at the end and we're gonna pull it taut. Okay, and I had to wiggle it a little bit. There is a loop, remember this is just straight yarn, so I wanted to make sure that I got it really nice and taut, so I kept wiggling it around until I felt like it was good and secure. And you may have to do the same, or you may not, but just make sure that it's nice and secure without it um, ripping or pulling apart. So, 
this is what it looks like again this is the underside of the hat um, but it is very pretty very mosaic if you wanted to use that as your actual outside of your hat all right okay now at this point you're going to fold this in half and we're going to get ready to start our hat okay so remember the tail that we created at the very very beginning when we made the project that five loops at this point we're going to go ahead and snip those loops apart that is going to give us the straight tail that we need to be able to sew our hat together so right here as you can tell the loops all have a little bitty string that holds the, the tails together the loops together you're going to snip that very carefully because you don't want to cut your yarn but once you do that you'll end up with a tail that's about 15 inches long and that tail right there is what we're going to use to do the top portion of our hat as well as the side okay so I'm just flipping it so that the bottom becomes a top. I like the way that looks better, and we'll get started. And we're going to take that tail that we created by snipping the loops, and we're going to actually weave that through the top portion. Following the screen here, you can see what I'm doing. That's going to create a cinch that's going to allow the hat to come together. We're literally just weaving the tail through the stitches. You can kind of see it here again on the screen. So in and then back out. And by doing this motion, by weaving it in, I'm actually doing it in between each and every stitch. I think I switched it up towards the end there. But by weaving it in and out, it's going to allow it to become like a drawstring and you'll be able to cinch the entire hat to close. See, as you can see here. So just continue doing that along the top all the way around. And that's how we're going to, again, cinch the top of the hat. Closed. And then we'll end up kind of sewing down the side. Well, we won't really be sewing it, but we'll be weaving the yarn along the side to create a closed tube. Okay, so here we are at the end. And at the very end here, I'm just sliding that yarn through. And I'll give it a tug. This is really satisfying <laughs> because it cinches in really nicely. Um, pull it as taut as you can, and then you're done with the top portion of your hat. Now, again, this is very fluffy yarn. Take your time at this point. Make it look the way you want it to look, okay? Once you've done that, you're going to sew along the bottom. Not sew along the bottom, but you're going to um, see how I'm doing this. I'm grabbing a, a loop from each side, and I'm just feeding that yarn through it. And I did it from the top, and I'll do it all the way to the bottom and I realized my um, camera angle was off here so I didn't get a lot of this on camera but basically what you're doing you're just taking that same tail that we used to cinch around the top and we're gonna pull that all the way down to the bottom of the cap so that is sealing up our cap which is making nice little tube for our head to fit or for your child's head to fit because it didn't look as smooth as I would like, I ended up making this part of the design of the hat. But again, this is seven bulk yarn. It is really forgiven. You can't see all of this. And this is the inside of the hat. So when you flip it inside out, it'll look a little bit more cleaner. But I did end up making this the front of my hat as opposed to like the side or the back. And I kind of made it work for within the project. And I'll show you that. So just tie a knot here to secure everything together. So that tail that we had at the very end, remember we had that long tail at the very end. We're going to go ahead and cut that and I'm going to snip one of the loops so that I have a little tail that I can tie to the other tail if that makes any sense you see here I'm just kind of snipping those loops and I'm just loosening up the tail and then I'll take those two ends and I'll tie them together and then I'll weave in everything that's pretty much done but wait, you know, I'm going to do something a little bit more. I'm going to fold it up a little so that it's not so long. Because mind you, this is probably about 12 to 13 inches. That's entirely too long for a child's head. I'm going to fold it up and make a little brim. Um, and then by doing that, I'll have about 8 inches or so of hat. Which makes for a nice slouch to the hat. Now remember that area that we kind of sewed together. To me it looked a little crude. I think I could make that a little better with another project. But I don't think it looks bad. So what I did was I took my brim and I made like a little bow. Um, kind of making that center area f a focal point. Like it's that's exactly what I was looking for. And then I put the little um, pom pom on there. So it all kind of comes together really nicely. This is what the hat looks like 
very very cute i love this color this is called cosmic blast i believe but it's so pretty okay so we're really rounding the band almost complete there's a little bitty hole there if you want to take a yarn needle which is optional you can take a yarn needle and a smaller yarn and sew that lid together or you can take the loops from the tail snip them apart and use that to attach your pom-poms and cinch in that hole a little bit more whatever you decide is up to you it works easily both ways i had some bernat yarn that i have because i have a lot of yarn here i use just a regular um a thinner yarn to sew everything together but you can absolutely use this thick yarn it does work just fine you'll just feed it through the bottom half of ev almost every pom-pom i've ever seen has a little loop you just put the yarn through the loop and then you would attach the whole thing to the top of the hat so if this part's confusing to you i always kind of rush the end because i kind of think that it's extra if you want me to show you in greater detail how to put pom-poms on a hat if it doesn't make sense here please let me know and i will do a short video showing you how to just attach pom-poms but i think this is really more about the aesthetic and what you want it to look like so you kind of can play with it until you get exactly what you're looking for but that's what you'll do you'll attach the pom-pom i did two because i want it to look really full and this is what it came out to be this is a really really cute project did not take long guys if you have any questions please be sure to leave them in the comment section down below subscribe to my channel if you have not already done so and i will see you in my next video thanks for watching bye